says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right. For soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath, and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant. These I will bring to my holy mountain, and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means, I myself am a Israelite a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus then called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person but what comes out of the mouth that defiles. When then his disciples approached him and said, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense at what they heard you say? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander, these are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from the region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We human beings have a myriad of ways that we judge and compartmentalize and separate ourselves out from one another. Race and ethnicity, gender, education, orientation. I could go on probably until we're all sick of hearing it. We tend to be most comfortable with people that remind us of ourselves. And yet, the calling we have from our God is to rise above this. 
and to move beyond the things we use as excuses to build barriers. In our first lesson, we see this in the description of the non-Jews, the, the Gentiles who embrace the faith, being welcomed with the returning Israelites back to the land, back to the temple, back to God's earthly throne room, back to that safe and mystical place of closeness with God. In other parts of the Old Testament, the image is used that Israel is to be a light to the nations, an attraction for all who would come to know and love and serve Yahweh. Paul picks this theme up in our second lesson, describing Jesus as a doorway, a path for both Gentile and Jew to come together in the realm of God. No longer again, distinctions, separations, barriers, elitism, but together in Christ. Our gospel passage has two very different scenes in it. The first one is simply about the whole debate and discussion of purity. In the ancient world, it was believed that things that were unclean, soiled food, dirty hands when you eat, would bring evil spirits into you. Jesus pushes back against that. The second piece is what's really crucial for us today. It's often referred to as the story of the Syrophoenician woman. This region of Tyre and Sidon was an area of, of Phoenician Canaanite um, settlements, and they were at odds and contention with Israel for many generations. There is a long history of bloodshed and animosity between the two. Jesus' response to the woman in the story is very typical of his day and his era and his people. It's, however, a very difficult and painful story for a lot of us as Christians because we're not used to looking at this part of Jesus. In our creed, and we'll, um, we talk about Jesus as fully divine and fully human, but most of our conversations and our studies are around that divine part. We don't talk about the human part much. And today, we have a very powerful image of that human part of Jesus, who's still figuring it out, who's still learning as he goes along, who comes to a whole new realization of what his mission and ministry means. As I mentioned, he and his disciples respond to her in what was the typical way, just ignoring her, but she doesn't let them get away with it. She does believe in Yahweh, she's not a Baal worshiper, and she's not going to be pushed off or brushed aside. She hounds them until Jesus finally has to stop and address her. And she still won't let him brush her off, even with insults. She deftly and brilliantly turns the insult back around on Jesus, who gets it, recognizes the gift of faith and in true Matthean fashion, simply gives the order and the miracle happens. We've had a week with a lot of painful news about race relations and um, ideologies in our midst. As a Christian people, there is a long history of contention and confusion and struggle coming to fully grasp this message from Christ, that it's not an exclusive gift, it's a gift to be shared, that his welcome into the kingdom is for all, and our respect should be for all. In the early days, uh, it was a contention between uh, Jewish Christians who believed that Gentiles had to become fully Jewish before they could accept Jesus, 
and others, like Paul, who said no. They're called and welcome as who they are. In later generations, there were feuds over many things, most notably in the Protestant Reformation era, there were feuding and excommunications and violence over how you read the Bible and interpreted it, and whether or not you accepted the leadership of the Pope, and on and on and on. It took additional generations and centuries for Christians to come to grips with the truth that slavery was just wrong, and it had to stop, and it had to go away. And in our own lifetimes, we watch Christianity struggling with what is the proper role of women? And is there a place for gay, lesbian, and trans persons in our church? And how do we embrace the other, the different from us? But the call remains the same. Rise above the differences. Rise above the distinctions. Embrace one another. Learn from one another. See the eyes of Jesus in one another. With your worship bulletins out by the door, I hope everyone had a chance to see the flyer with the uh, statement from our presiding bishop. On the back, there is a link. I know it's a little complicated, and I, I'm sure Mark, when you have the opportunity in the next day or so, will get that up on our website. It's easier to click through and follow it. There's a video uh, with the same statement, but there's also resources for personal and group reflection. I recommend it highly. Uh, Michael Curry is a brilliant communicator and a true man of God. My brothers and sisters, today, as we hear these lessons, as we move forward to celebrate the gift of love and marriage, let us embrace the calling to rise above all those things that make us different from one another, to rise above fear and misunderstanding, to rise above and embrace the call to love as Jesus loved.